Remember, Bragg and Colangelo bootstrapped charges that are normally misdemeanors to some underlying crime to make the charges a felony. But what was the underlying crime? Prosecutors didn't reveal that until after the trial began. Mr. Colangelo, in his opening statement, accused President Trump of violating the Federal Elections Campaign Act. But the problem is, in the plain reading of that act, doesn't support the indictment or the verdict. As Commissioner Smith stated, allowing this prosecution to go forward and the ultimate jury decision threaten the enforcement procedures established by Congress under the act and stretch the meaning of the statute in such a way as to threaten due process of law. It is clear Manhattan District Judge Juan Marchand's decisions, guided by political bias, unfairly prejudiced the outcome of the trial and violated President Trump's due process rights. Bragg's prosecution of President Trump, with the help of Judge Mershon, opened the door for politically motivated prosecutions, and it will not be easy to undo the damage that's already been done. As we have seen, other ambitious prosecutors have followed Bragg's lead and pursued politically motivated indictments against the former president. Rather than debate political opponents on substance, the Democrats' strategy to win the 2024 election is through the use of partisan lawfare tactics. These politically motivated local prosecutions raise substantial federal interest and potential collusion between federal and state authorities. And that is precisely why we are here today. Alvin Bragg's prosecution of President Trump was personal, it was based on politics, and it was wrong. I can't even imagine someone bringing a fraud case to the United States Attorney's Office where nobody lost money, there were no victims, and no one was worse off at the end of it. It just makes it laughable, even before you get to steps two through probably 20 that make this case really absurd to have been brought to begin with. It wasn't a contribution. If it was a contribution, it would have been, wouldn't have been reported until after the election, and no one suffered any losses, and yet they bring this charge against President Trump. I find that just amazing. But that's not political motivation. I don't know, because what other motivation could there be? Yeah, it's really almost in, inarguable at this point that the motivation for this case was political. It's really, I've never heard a, a serious argument that, that it should have been prosecuted otherwise. I know Ms., Mr. Wu might, might have one, but I just haven't, haven't heard that because it seems political from the, you know, from the inception all the way to the end. So when hearing about the weaponization of the federal government, Texas Rep Jasmine Crockett delivered yet again. I just want to level set because I feel as if some people don't understand how government works and I don't know how they got to Congress. So, Mr. Wu, I'm going to need you to help me out because I don't know that I trust that other people will know the answers to these questions. Number one, how many branches of government do we have? Uh, three. Three. Okay, sounds good. So, can you name them for me? Legislative, judiciary, and executive. Very good. Okay, so currently, I think that I serve in the legislative branch. Would you agree? I agree. Okay, fine. Can you tell me, when somebody goes to court, such as a criminal convicted of 34 felony counts, state court in New York, um, would that be the legislative people or judicial people? Well, it's really the executive that's prosecuting, and then it's within the judiciary to run the trial properly. Okay, very good. So, judiciary. So, typically, if someone has an issue with, say, what happens in court, do they then somehow hop from state court all the way to the federal legislative branch, or is there a different process in which you are supposed to be able to um, explain any issues you may have? process would be the judicial appellate process holding aside the issue of state versus federal. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. So normally people don't get convicted on a state level and somehow end up litigating the issue on the federal level in the legislative branch. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So something is different about what's going on today. I just wanted to clarify because I thought I was living in the upside down for a second. Now, I want to move on and talk about how someone is prosecuted currently, because under Project 2025, we'll get there, there will be a different way to prosecute people. But currently, it is my understanding, and I only kind of went to law school, passed a couple of bar exams, and practiced on the state and federal levels, but just clarify for me. When someone goes in to be prosecuted, is it, say, the President of the United States that somehow becomes the state prosecutor in New York? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because he's the executor, huh? That's that other branch. Correct. That's the, okay, okay. All right, so 
You have this prosecutor, and in this case, it's Alvin Bragg, who was duly elected, correct? Correct. Not appointed by the president, correct? Right. Duly elected by the citizens in his jurisdiction, right? Right. So he's elected, and usually there's some sort of an investigation that takes place, correct? Prior to his election? Or? No, 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 when it, with, a, with a case, I'm sorry. Yes, I've correct. moved on. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, so the very first part of a case is that we go through an investigation. After that investigation, then the prosecutor usually has what we would consider to be some sort of prosecutorial discretion as to whether or not they want to go forward, correct? Correct. All right, and then they use that discretion, but then when it's somebody that is facing a felony amount of time, which is usually in most states over a year, then they have to present it to a grand jury. Is that right? That's right. Now, a grand jury is comprised of citizens, correct? Correct. U.S. citizens from that area, correct? Right. Okay, so they have to come to the conclusion that they are going to issue what we call a true bill, correct? Correct. All right, so then we have an indictment. And then there's pretrial motions, there's pretrial hearings, all kinds of stuff, right? Right. All right, and then ultimately, depending on where you are, you have the opportunity to say, hey, I want a jury trial, correct? Correct. And a jury trial is comprised of U.S. citizens again, right? Right. Okay, very good. All right, so can you tell me so far if all of this took place in the case in New York? Yes, it did. Oh, okay, okay. All right, so you get to trial. Now, when you show up to trial and you're facing a felony amount of time, as a defendant, are you not entitled to uh, an attorney? Yes, you are. And your attorney is allowed to pick the jury, they're allowed to present evidence, and ultimately, it is a jury of your peers who decides whether or not you are guilty or not, correct? Correct. The and pick, in this the picking, case, the 30... Has the judge involved too. <laughs> and in this case, they found him guilty not once, not twice, not three times, not four, not five, not six. I could keep going on, but 34 counts were given. So the opinions of these people who were not juries is not what we do in this country. In this country, we have a system in which jurors decide who is found guilty, and if you have a problem with that, you go I'm, to the appellate court, I'm which the, the last lady. time I checked, he was raising money so that he could go to the appellate court and appeal his decision, and they will have the final say-so. Thank you so much. And you know what? Honestly, I think that People like Jasmine Crockett make it even more evident that Joe Biden needs to step aside. You know, what does he really have to lose at this point? He can't be doing any worse in the polls. And, you know, it's pretty clear that he doesn't have the, the energy and the fire that he did 10 years ago. And you can't blame him. He's 81 years old. It is what it is. But at this point, you can't make the argument that Donald Trump is a threat to democracy and that he's going to destroy everything. And here comes Project 2025. But also, it doesn't matter if Joe Biden poops his pants and who cares if he has to miss meetings because he has to take naps and things along those lines. It doesn't matter who gives a damn. You know, you can't make that argument. It's completely null and void at this point. So, you know, Donald Trump, yes, he is a massive issue. He's going to screw a whole lot of things up. But Joe Biden, if he can't stay awake past 8 p.m., if it's time for him to start wrapping it up before 9 rolls around, then what are we really talking about?